the truth about e-collars. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what they are and why you should definitely get one. Ooh, I'm gonna get some hate for this one though. E-collars are tools that allow you to communicate with your dog wirelessly. Dogs, as we've said before, they learn through association. An e-collar is not necessarily a correction, as it is more associating the sensation with your voice. You're not correcting a dog with the e-collar. It's a learning tool for them. So first, let's talk about some common misconceptions about e-collars. Each brand of e-collar has their own patented frequency that controls what the sensation is going to feel like for the dog. This is exactly why I tell people not to go cheap on e-collars. Some people buy really cheap e-collars that run very hot and those do shock you. There's two brands of e-collars that I use. I use the e-collar technologies mini educator, which looks like this is the collar and this is the remote. Or I use the Garmin Sport Pro, which is this. This is the one you guys see on Kyra all the time. Now, the difference between these two is the Garmin, the Garmin has 10 levels that you can go through with your dog. It also has a bark li uh, limiter, it's got a light, it's got some other cool stuff on it. So, I've used this one for Kyra's entire life and I really like it. Uh, my only complaint about this one is it only has 10 levels, where this one has 100. And the reason I like that is because what may be a two is not enough for one dog or for your dog, but three is too hot, I can really fine tune this one to get that perfect range. Now, the misconception about e-collars is that you're punishing your dog, it's cruel to your dog, and all that. So, to show you guys this is not punishing your dog, I'm gonna use it on myself. So, let me turn it on. So, I don't know if you can see it, the light's green. I'll turn this on. All right, so it's on. With the mini educator, I work my dog on a four. So this is exactly the level that I work my dog on at all times. I'm gonna hold it in my hand and I'm pressing the button. You see the light light up? I'm using it on my hand right now. I do not feel it. These things are not to shock your dog. This, it's a sensation that your dog will associate with your voice to help you control it. I would use the Garmin as well, but it's actually dead because I just used it and I haven't charged it yet. So, this is what I work my dog on and it works. Here, I'll put it on my face. So, Make sure you go with a reputable brand when you buy your e-collar. Make sure it's good quality and you have a lot to choose from. You can't go wrong with the e-collar technology and the Garmin e-collars. Um, I will link both of those down in the description below so you guys can find them if you're interested. As you can see, I shocked myself in the face and I didn't feel it. I don't know where the misconception came from. Well, I do know where it came from. People use these things incorrectly all the time. And that's why they have the misconception around them that they do. If you use it correctly, you're helping your dog. You're not punishing your dog. You can control your dog off leash. You get to take the leash off and let your dog run, be wild and be free. But when you need your dog to come back, you have the ability to have your dog to come back. This is freeing your dog from the leash more than it is hurting it. It's not hurting your dog at all, actually. So how do you figure out what frequency you want to work your dog on. So with Kyra, I put it on her um, when she was about five months old. I don't use any collar until they're about five months old. And I turned it on the very lowest setting and I had a 30 foot leash. And all I did was let her run out to the end of the leash, let her play, and then I hit the button and I recalled her. All I'm looking for is a slight change of behavior that tells me that she just felt it. If your dog yelps, it's way too high and you need to bring it down quite a bit. This should not be a painful experience for your dog. So I went to level one, she didn't feel it. As a puppy, Kyra worked at level two. So when I went to level two, I hit it and she shut her mouth and looked at me like, did, did you feel that? Did, did you feel that? Did, was it just me? Am I, uh, okay, all right, I guess that was. 
So I knew I, I had hit the right frequency because it didn't hurt her. She just kind of went, hey, something just happened. I'm not sure what just happened, but something just happened. It's just a very subtle indicator that you're at the right frequency. So you got your right frequency when you're training your dog you accompany all of your commands with the e-collar. If I'm telling Kyra to sit, I'll, I'll hit the e-collar, and then when she sits, I release the e-collar. So she's gonna associate my voice with that sensation that the e collar is giving her. So I'll say sit, sit, or I'll say sit, and I'll let go. I do that for all of them. I do it for down, I do it for heel, I do it for place. And as soon as they get into the position that I want them to be in, I let go. Your dog's also gonna realize, hey, I kind of control this thing a little bit. When he says sit, I control the sensation. As soon as I sit, it's gone. That gives you a lot more responsiveness with your dog. You're gonna say sit and your dog's gonna be like, boom. What next? Hit me with the next one. Actually, I, I might just do a video in the future with my friend at Integrity K9, which I'll put his link in the description below as well. Uh, we may do a video showing the proper way to use one of these to help you guys get started with it. We might do that. That, that might be a thing. But e-collars are not punishment. You're not cruel to your dog for using an e-collar and they're not mean. Just ensure that you're using this correctly and this will be the best tool you ever got for your dog hands down, the best tool you've ever got for your dog. The, the great thing about e-collars and why I'm so happy that I used one with Kyra is that I can say with 100% confidence when I'm at my mom's house and she's running around the field just hanging out and the neighbor lets their dog out and Kyra sees it, I don't have to worry about my dog running over there and trying to get to their dog. She's not dog aggressive, but she wants to play with every dog she sees. So I don't have to worry about Kyra running over there because I have complete control of her off leash. I don't have to keep her cordoned to a six foot radius around me. This thing go half a mile. I can let her run and play as long as it's safe for her. And when it becomes unsafe, I know with complete fact, I can recall her immediately with this. Now you might say, well, I can do that with food or I can, my dog's recall is great. It's awesome, I'm glad for you, but what happens when your dog decides that it's dog chow is not as important as the squirrel that's across the road or as important as the neighbor's cat that got outside? That's where you call her. It's just, you can't beat it. You really, the peace of mind you get with an e-collar, you, you absolutely can't beat it. I can go outside, just hang out and just let her be and she runs and plays and then she wears herself out and then she sleeps all night. It's, we all win here. Now, one thing you can do when you buy your e-collar, it will come with a collar that's kind of like this. A lot of times they're super long, not a big fan of them. But you can go on Amazon for like $10 and buy a bungee collar. It'll stretch and when your dog breathes, it'll actually expand with your dog's neck as needed. I like these bungee collars. I use these bungee collars a lot and they're a breeze to put on. She just puts her head in it and I tighten it up right there however I need it. Also, if your dog's got really thick fur, you may want to get longer prongs. Um, I had used the long prongs with Kyra. Um, they could honestly probably be a little bit longer, but keep that in mind. If your dog has really thick fur, you may want to get long prongs and when you put it on your dog, kind of move it around a little bit to get it through the fire. So I hope this video clears up some muddy water about e-collars. They're, they're an incredible tool. Just be sure that you're using it correctly. A lot of the misconceptions, as I've said, have came from people who use these incorrectly or just don't know how to use them at all. Make sure you do your research, use them correctly, and it'll be the best tool ever. Also, I'm going to just reiterate this again. Don't go cheap on an e-collar. Get an e-collar from a very reputable brand because as I said, I've had a cheap one. It lit me up. Don't go the cheap route with this. Buy you an e-collar technologies, buy you a Garmin, something like that. Don't go with an off brand. And normally I'm all for going off brand. I'm stingy. I'm cheap. 
I'm all about going off brand stuff. But this is one time I'm gonna tell you, don't go off brand, go buy the real deal, get you, get you a good one, and you won't regret it. So that's all I got for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much for watching all my videos. I, I'm Thank you guys so much. If there's any topics that you guys would like for me to go over in the future, leave them down in the comments below and I might make a video on it if it's a good one. Other than that, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much. Later.